Hi, my name is Reverend Karo Kiyama, and this is Thoughts of a Shaken Pastor Season 5. In this season, we are talking to men and women who have positively impacted the growth of the faith in Kenya. And so today it is my extreme pleasure to introduce one of the founding fathers of the Deliverance Church, Dr. William Tumising, Bishop William Tumising. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank Such you so a privilege to be with you. Thank you so much. Tell us a little bit about yourself growing up as a young person. Yeah, thank you so much. First of all, I would like to appreciate this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming to see me and also for the interview. My name is Bishop William Tumising. Mm -hmm. I actually come from Bomet. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm one of the founders of Deliverance Church. Mm -hmm. Deliverance Church was founded on 22nd of November, 1970. And I was 1970, and when and I was there when it happened, I'm um, one of the founders. And apparently, before that, I was still ministering somewhere else. Mm. I was ministering in another church called African Gospel Church. Mm. So this year, I'm celebrating 61 years in ministry. In the ministry, not Praise when I was God. born in the Praise ministry. God. And I thank God for the way that He has taken care of me for the last 61 years. I thank God very sincerely for the way that He has. Um, continue to use me to be a mm. blessing to many people in this country. And of course, all over the world. Mm. I've gone to many countries and I give God the glory for what he has done through me. Amen. So I appreciate this opportunity and thank you so much. And we really appreciate having you. You are welcome. You know, for some of us who grew up hearing about some of you and all that you've done, it's such a privilege to be seated here to talk to you and eventually talk to your wife about what the Lord has done through you. Let thank me you. ask. Were, yeah. you were, you, were you born to Christian parents? Were you no. Christians? Uh -huh. Yeah, my, my parents were not Christians. Uh -huh. Neither were my, 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 my siblings. Uh -huh. Apparently, I was born in a family of 10. Uh -huh. We have seven sons and uh, uh, three, three daughters. Girls. And I thank God because I'm right in the middle. Uh -huh. my, in my brothers, we have three of them were ahead of me and three were be below, I mean, younger than me. Uh -huh. So I'm right in the middle. Uh -huh. So I was born in a... In a, in a, in a uh, what you may call uh, Christians, or other uh, parents who are not Christians. Mm -hmm. and, I th and I thank God because of the way that he has taken care of me, although it was very difficult to begin with. Mm -hmm. Because those days, uh, it was, I got saved before independence. Uh -huh. And it was very difficult to be a Christian those days. Yes. Because um, even the Africans used to say that uh, we don't want Wazungus and anything that they brought. Mm. When, uh, when we, because there was almost poor Christianity. Mm. I got saved, by the way, in a, in a Christian school, mm -hmm. or rather in a sort of in a, in a, in a school which was um, which was uh, founded by the by the by the missionaries. Mm -hmm. So and the, and, the, and the, my parents did not like it. Mm. They say that we have followed the white man religion. Mm. When I told them, by the way, I did not follow the white man religion. I followed Jesus Christ mm. as my personal savior. So they were saying that even even Jesus Christ was a white man. Mm. So therefore, we don't want that in our home. Mm. There was one time when I was even kicked out of the of my home oh, wow. because they did not like uh, my Christian faith. Mm. But I thank God because of the way that sustained me from that time up to this day. So I'm so grateful that the Lord has sustained me even in a non-Christian family. Family. And how mm. old were you at this time? I think I was about, uh, let me see, uh, about 12 years old or so. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. And I stayed saved and I refused to go back to the wall, although I, I was still young. Oh, my goodness. Mm. And not, you grew up in an era where parents used to really believe in beating. That's true. They wanted to beat the That's salvation true. out of you. That's true. Uh -huh. In fact, they chased me away from home. So uh, actually, uh, I went and stayed somewhere else alone. And it was very difficult for me because I was still young and mm. uh, I was wondering what to do. But uh, I thank God because I love two things which have helped me up to today mm. in the Christian faith. Number one, I love prayer. Mm. Number two, I love to study the Word of God. Mm. And therefore, those two things sustain me from that time up to today. I love, I'm a man of prayer and I love the Word of God. Amen. That's what sustained me. And, and the Word of God is an anchor. That's true. You know, I've always been curious, Bishop. Yeah. And so I'll use this opportunity maybe to, you know, to mm. um, fulfill my curiosity. That's true. I always wondered, how was it like for you getting saved in the colonial era? Yeah. And here you were, like like your parents were saying, this is a 
white man's religion. Yeah. And the person who's brought it is yeah. not always living up to That's what true. they presented. Yeah. That's true. And so here you are, you've encountered the truth because God uses both noble and ignoble vessels, That's isn't true. it? Yeah. And yet you don't agree with everything that the white man brought. That's true. What was there like some disconnect in your spirit and how did you how did you you know come to accept this faith even though the, 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 it was brought in a jar of clay for lack of a better word. Yeah, that's true. Now uh, first of all, uh, Christianity is a personal decision. Uh, in, when we have heard and when we have received the word of God, you become you know, uh, you begin personal relationship with God. Mm. That is more than anything else. Mm. That personal intimate relationship with God is the most important thing in this world. Mm. If one is saved, you must be able to realize that in this world, nobody else can help you except Jesus Christ himself. Mm. And for him to help you, you must have personal relationship with him. Mm. I like what Jesus Christ said to the disciples when he said that the most important um, I mean, commandment is life the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. That mm. means that uh, Christianity is a personal relationship with God. Mm. And we have that type of relationship. It supersedes any other relationship. Mm. The relationship between you and your parents, the relationship between you and your friends, that personal relationship is very important more than anything else. In fact, I usually tell people, you must love God even more than loving his work. There are mm. people who are, who are, who are, who are so, so busy with the work of God yeah. and they have forgotten the Lord of the work. Mm. Uh, let me tell you, that has really helped me to love God even more than his work. Mm. That means I'm committed to God more than committed to his work. Amen. And that has really helped me from that time up to today. Oh, wow. That's right. That has sustained me up to now. The love for God more than anything else in life. So here you are as a 12 year old, you've given your life to the Lord, you've chased, yeah. been chased away from home. That's true. I don't know, was there a church or was there at least a couple of believers to help? What kept you going and growing? That's good. Now, in fact, that is a very important point you are, you are raising about the relationship with other Christians. Oh. Because you cannot be able to isolate yourself and be strong. You need the fellowship of other believers. That's why the Bible says that let us not be like those people who don't want fellowship. Mm. So I, I, I had some friends, mm. friends who are very close to me. In fact, there was one particular one who loved me so much that he used to write letters to me, encourage me. Mm. And I used to go for, to, to him for fellowship. Mm. And that is what sustained me up to today. Mm personal relationship with other people. Because Christianity is not only a personal relationship with God, it's also a relationship with other people. Amen. It is both vertical and horizontal. Amen. That you need to be able to have friends who can encourage you. Amen. In fact, the Bible puts it very clearly in the book of Proverbs, uh -huh. chapter 13, verse 20. And I, that you usually call that scriptures. We say that he who works with wise men shall be wise. Shall be wise. But the companions of who shall be destroyed. Mm -hmm. So, and that is why the Bible says that, uh, you know, it, it says that a bad company corrupts good morals. morals. So I thank God because I had friends who can be able to encourage me when I'm very weak. And up to today, that's what I still, I still do. do I do. fellowship with people who can encourage me. Because nobody in this world has monopoly of wisdom. Yes. And especially in the things of God. Yes. We need to realize that you cannot be isolated and you still be strong alone. Mm. We need other people to fellowship with. Amen. And that is what has helped me for up to from that time up to today. Okay, so which church were you fellowshipping at the time? The first turn was what called African Gospel Church, mm -hmm. which is mainly in Kericho area. Okay. Uh, you know, in Kalenjin area. Mm. The African Gospel Church. That is the mm. church that I, I, I was fellowshipping. Uh, that's, that's where I got saved. That's where I was baptized in water. Mm. And I thank God for that church up to today. Of course, when we, I came to Nairobi in 1970, there was no, there was no, there was no church church here. Mm. So uh, we started Deliverance Church uh, with a few brethren. And that is why I was not, I, I came out of that church and I joined Deliverance Church. And maybe just before we talk about founding Deliverance Church, so mm. you did any of your family have any of your family of origin eventually come to the Lord, your parents, your siblings? Now, indeed they did. What happened is that uh, up to today, I'm still praying for my 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 my, my friend, my, my my family members. Mm. I I prayed for them, uh, as I say, we have ten, I mean, we are telling the family, and most of the family, well, much of my my brothers and sisters are now saved mm. because I preached to them and many of them. I, I used to have a very interesting uh, you know uh, meeting, which was called a get together. 
mm. with all the family members at the end of the year and that is especially during christmas mm. I, i remember i sponsored that the first time with my wife mm. that we brought all my brothers and sisters and their families mm. and my parents together mm. and we were we were meeting together <laughs> in my home the home of my father and then after that we met in different homes and that is what brought the change in my family mm. in our family mm. that many of many of them got saved through those meetings bring them together and the reason why i did that is because i was feeling that i don't want to go to heaven alone yeah i want to make sure that my 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 siblings my brothers even my parents should also go to heaven and i think that should be something that everybody each one of us should mm. be able to do yeah. we must realize that one day you will go to a place where you will be enjoying life forever may you also glue your, your your relatives may yeah. you include especially your family members yeah. so i thank god because of those meetings which brought many of them to salvation amen mm. amen so you got saved you went to high school yeah Uh-huh then afterwards and then I came I came well I, then I came to Nairobi when I was in Nairobi as I say that is where we started Deliverance Church So how did you meet these people that you founded Deliverance Church with That's a, now there was a man of God who is still there uh, by the name Apostle Joseph Kayo Yes I'm sure many people know Apostle mm. Chokaka and uh, he used to have uh, fellowships in Karyoko Social Karyoko yes. Social Hall and I attended that so we used to have this fellowship every Saturday this is in the late 60s late late 70s late 70s, late 70s. now or rather the early 70s by the way uh, so he started those meetings in 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 in, in Karyoko Social Hall wow. and I was one of those who attended and one day about uh, it was it used to be on Saturdays only but one day he said that we are beginning a new church and uh, he borrowed I mean, he, that he got the name from the book of Luke chapter chapter 4 verse 18 mm-hmm. where the bible talks about deliverance mm-hmm. so uh, that is when he started and then we started together i was with them mm-hmm. we were about 56 of us when we started deliverance church how so, many of you are still here uh, quite a number of us. i don't remember but there were quite a number mm-hmm. Or those who are there one of them is a is a uh, i mean a bishop uh, dr john brown masinde mm-hmm. uh, we we were together oh i didn't know jb yeah. stands for john brown uh, john brown does oh, wow. yeah, yeah jb stands for john brown mm-hmm. apostle uh, that is that is uh, i mean bishop dr john brown masinde mm-hmm. now we started with him mm-hmm. the rest of them of them they came later even those who are apostles now and those who are bishops now they came later mm-hmm. but i remember the first person that was there during that time when the Stephen church was started was john brown masinde mm-hmm. and that is where we started together Oh wow. Mm. Wow, such a rich heritage. Yeah. So you began at that time were you were you a minister or were you working for the church or were you I, I was one of the members. Work? I think at that time they had not even uh, chosen leaders. Oh. What happened is that it was a fellowship oh. and he just declared and said that this as from today and that, that is 22nd of November 1970 oh. we have started a new church called Deliverance Church. Oh. Tomorrow he was talking to us on Saturday <laughs> because it was only Saturday's <laughs> meeting. We used to call them Holy Ghost Revival meeting. Holy Holy, Holy Ghost Revival meetings. meetings. Yeah. It was mainly about teaching about the Holy Spirit, the move of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. every Saturday. So then then one day he said, "Listen, I feel that the Lord is leading me to be able to start a church." And all those who are who are ready to start with me. So we left we left where we were. I used to attend all saints or oh, 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 not not all all all, uh, all nation. Mm-hmm. All nation gospel church. Mm-hmm. And I I used to be there. So I we joined we joined together you know uh, we we joined together Deliverance Church the following Sunday that is on 22nd of November Oh wow mm. so how did you move from being a member to eventually being a pastor and joining ministry full time what was your training by the way if I could take you back Now uh, what brought you to Nairobi uh, well of course there was I was looking for a job mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I came from a plan and looked for a job. But um, what happened is that, uh, of course, all of us start from somewhere. Mm. So uh, I remember the first time uh, when I was there, of course, Joker did not know me. Mm. And, uh, and of course, other prominent people. I was not the first lead, the first uh, member of the leadership. But uh, I remember one day, Uh, I said to the Lord Joker does not know me some of these people don't know me so I said that I need a job or something to do in the church I didn't want to 
warm the seats and oh. just stay there. So I was looking for something to do. And God told me, listen, if you are looking for a job, I would like to give you one. I said, Lord, I'm ready to do it. And God told me, buy some towels. I said, what for? He said, I will give you the job. So I did that. And then he told me that you come to church one hour before the service begin. So that is when I went there. But one hour, I did not know what to do. I went there one hour before the service begin. And God told me, the job I'm giving you is wipe the chairs. So I started wiping the chairs, you know, as simple as it was. Uh, nobody knew me. The later on, Choka was touched. He looked at me and said, young man, can you be an usher? I said, yes, sir. I continue being an usher. Later on, he said, young man, can you be a deacon? I said, yes. And then later on, he said, that young man, can you be an elder? He said, yes. And then after that, he said that you are going to be my assistant pastor. You are going to assist me. I, took, I, I assisted him for some time. And that was in 1977. Uh, uh, when I when I joined full time, and then from there he said uh, he left us. He left us on the first of of, of, of of December 1977. Oh, 19, just after you had come in. That I just came, and then and then I took over from him the, the following year in 1978. Oh wow! Yeah, seven years. Yeah. You know the problem sometimes with our generation and the generation that has come after us. Yeah, is that we are so much in a hurry. That's true. You know, you'd be thinking, oh, That's true. I didn't live on even me. I know the Lord where my wiping chairs. That's but true. for seven years, you served. That's not true. so that somebody can see. That's true. But because you love the Lord. That's true. Yeah. And, in, and let me tell you, I wanted to mention something very important here. Uh, I served as, a, you know, in those capacities because God told me I don't promote idlers. Mm -hmm. I promote people who are already doing something. Mm. That's why when I started wiping chairs, God realized that I'm, 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 I'm a servant mm. because I've started serving. And that is how God promoted me up to the level I am. And I thank God because I would like to encourage everybody, especially those who are listening to me. If you want God to, to bless you, learn to be a servant. Amen. We begin from servanthood. And in fact, you know, we are servants all the way, even, even when, when you are still a bishop. When you, when you become a bishop, you are still a servant, mm. a servant of the people of God, or a servant of God for that matter. Mm. So we need to be able to watch that, that we mean God, God is looking for people who are servants, mm. not masters. Mm. We have a problem nowadays, mm. for your information, where mm. people want to be known, where people, want to, mm. the people are seeking for position, people are crying for titles. You know, for example, there are people who, when you tell them that, excuse me, how are you so-and-so, a brother so-and-so, you say, I'm not a brother, I'm a bishop. So, so we have actually we are exalting now, say more than exalting Jesus, as the Bible says that Jesus Christ Himself said that if uh, I am exalted or I'm magnified, I will be able to draw men unto myself. May we learn to exalt Jesus. May we learn to magnify Jesus, and Jesus will be able to promote us. Before becoming uh, taking the help to lead that denomination, yeah, were you working a secular job? I was working as a I was working as a secular job, and then when I now started serving is when I joined the ministry full-time, mm -hmm. just before I took over. Okay. Yeah. So you became now a full-time employee of the That's church. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And were you married at this time? Yeah, the time that I joined the ministry, I was married. Okay. Because as I said, I was, we got married, or oh, sorry, I didn't say that. Mm -hmm. I was married on 31st of March, 1973. And by this time, in 1977, I was already married. In fact, I had children. So how did you meet your wife? Let me take you back. How did I? Meet your wife. Oh, that's good. That's a good question, by the way. First of all, we come together from the same area. Mm -hmm. We are a few kilometers apart. But we used to uh, we used to teach Sunday school together. Oh, wow. Yeah, there was a place uh, in the middle between my home and our home. There was a, we were teaching Sunday school right in the middle, a place called Blavoto. So she used to come from my home. We met under the tree. And our tree. We were teaching Sunday school and our tree oh, together. Tree. And then, of course, uh, we came to know one another. And then when we were in high school is when we, 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 we decided to, uh, to be, we, we thought we, 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 we earned the Lord to help us to be friends. Oh. And we became friends. And we got married in 1973. So immediately after high school, you it got married. True. That's true. Then you came to Nairobi That's to true. look for a job, mm. and you met the Lord. Yeah. So what were some of the challenges that you faced at the beginning, you know, as you were bringing up the denomination? And what, what, how was that like? Now, uh, first of all, there are what we call teething problems. Mm -hmm. Teething problems. The, 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 what I'm talking about is um, 
the differences between the leaders. Mm. I, I will never forget one time when I had so many I mean, leaders coming to me when I was when I was the, the head of the church, coming to me with problems because they have had differences in different churches. Uh, I will never forget one time they came to see me, some of the leaders at night around, I think it was around nine, and we talked together up to around, around one. And when they were going out, others were coming. At the same time, and I said, "Just a minute. Why don't you even stay until tomorrow?" I said, "No, we must be able to to solve these problems to, tonight." Mm -hmm. So the th problems that I had from the beginning is what we call teething problems. Mm -hmm. Why? It because we are starting. We, we have started a church where we 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 don't maybe we we have different thought about doctrines, for example, mm -hmm. uh, and therefore it was quite difficult. But uh, dealing problems were, was the main problem. People who are, especially church leaders, who are not in good terms with each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know they just doing for position. And some of them are, are having, uh, you know, personal crutches against each mm -hmm. other. Uh, some of those things. So that's some of the things that uh, I discovered from the beginning. The other one is that, of course, um, uh, they, we had problems with uh, administration. Administration here means that um, some of them well, did not see things the way I saw because mm -hmm. I came from a secular employment and I was very strict with, with administration. Mm -hmm. In fact, when I came, I had to change everything. Mm -hmm. For example, I introduced things which many people did not like. Mm -hmm. For example, pay, payment for charge. I bring mm -hmm. about pity for charge. And because that is what I learned from the secular world. I say we must be very strict. We must have accountability. I also brought in the issue of auditors. Mm. Hey, that is one thing that the child doesn't want to hear today. Auditors. Mm. When the auditors come, you know, when you give them liberty to do their job, mm. they will be able to give you instructions of what some of the things, some of the weakness of the child, mm. and say that, listen, please improve on this, improve on this. And how did you deal with pressure? You know, sometimes I sit down and I ask myself, yeah. all men are ambitious. Yeah. All men are ambitious. I don't think there's a man who does not want to get ahead. That's true. And the difference between you as you were building Deliverance mm. Church and, yeah. a, and somebody like Chris Kirubi who was building East That's African true. Industries is that he was going to inherit it. That's true. And I know now we're in an era where people have churches that are limited companies, That's which, is a, which is not our story for today. But you knew that your children were never going to come and say, mm. you know, we are inheriting the church. That's true. Because the church does not belong to it, it belongs to Jesus That's Christ. True. Mm. You are putting in the same time, the same effort, mm -hmm. the same, you know, the same vaga, mm -hmm. vigor into this work that somebody who's building their businesses, mm -hmm. but you're not going to take it home with you. And I think sometimes that is the struggle for most, I think specifically men, That's because you, you want to ask yourself when you're in your 50s, your 60s, your 70s, mm -hmm. what about me? That's so true. how did you tame that? Yeah, enough. First of all, I think it depends on um, on the love you have for God. Let me tell you, you know, uh, Jesus Christ said, love God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind. That personal, intimate relationship with God supersedes other, other relationships. In other words, supersedes even your own feelings about your, your, your member or rather your family members. So because I love God with all my heart, I had to give him the best. Mm. more than any, anything else. Because I know when I do that, he will also give me the best. God will also reward me. And let me tell you the truth. If we are thinking about the best thing for God, God will think about the best thing for us. For you, that's For true. sure. Now, God, you know, God is looking for people who can be able to give themselves completely fully to him so that he can be able to provide also for them. Because, as a, in, in fact, it's very interesting. I remember very well, uh, you know, that when we were building the church in Islam, um, uh, there was a challenge. A challenge in the sense that uh, we, we had no supporters, people from outside, like other, other churches. Mm -hmm. So what happened is that um, uh, I challenged people. I told people, excuse me, this is the work of God, and I would like us to be committed to it. And please, if possible, sell whatever your property you have to come so that we can build the church for Jesus Christ, even if you have a land. And God told me, you are challenging people to, to sell their land so that you can, you can pay money for the church. What about you? Are you also selling yours? In other words, God was telling me, mm. be an example. Mm -hmm. Don't challenge people and say, do what I say, but don't do what I do. Mm. May you tell them, do what I say and also what I do. Mm. 
So do you know what? We had a, we had a, a, a plot in, in Ongataronggai, mm. which we had bought. And we were going to, 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 to build our, ourselves our, 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 I mean, our home. Mm. And you know, God challenged me, sell that. And we had no other, no other land. Do you know what? I shared with my wife, I said, I feel the Lord is telling us to sell that land, although we don't have any other land. My wife said, God has also spoken to me about mm. it. So I thank God because we are in agreement mm. with my wife. We went and sold it. It was, a, a, it was a quarter of an acre. We sold it. And let me tell you, God is no man's debtor, mm -hmm. somebody said. And that's very true. As soon as we sold that land and we gave the money to the church, the entire land, we, gave, we brought all the money to the church. Let me tell you, after that, God gave me double. Oh, man. Can you imagine? Instead of giving us, we're giving us a quarter, he gave us half an acre. And apart from even half an acre, the half an acre had a beautiful house in it, which is like an ambassador's house. Why? Amen. It's because you do what for, for God, for, for God, do something for God, and He will do so, oh, many things for you. Yeah. That is what helped us so much. So I decided to be, give God the best. Even today, I'm encouraging people, please, may you learn to give God the best, and He will give you the best. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you know, somebody listening to us, maybe, you know, you're a pastor and you're saying, what does that mean? Or, or that excuses, you know, you don't have to plan you know, then, then we, we get into the whole story that was there during the time of Elijah, you know. Yeah. Is it, uh, is it uh, I think it's First or Second Kings chapter 5, yeah. where there's this prophet who died and left his wife in debt. Yeah. And we have a lot of prophets That's who true. die. And so how do you, you balance. know, what's the balance? That's true. Because you have a responsibility mm -hmm. to take, you have a wife, you have, a chil you have children. And these children eat physical food. That's true. You know, and they go to school where they pay with physical money. That's true. And at the same time, you want to grow the work of the Lord. That's true. So how, is it the systems that helped you? Did you have like, you know, say, we paid positions in the church? How how did you manage that? Because I think there's a pastor there who could be listening and they, and they justify taking mm. the money because they say, Mm. So he could that was my salary and mm. Yeah. How would you advise them to go about, you know, organizing their own life and yet still being faithful to the call of God? Yeah. Now, uh, first of all, I think we should realize that um, in every place there is provision for everything. Mm. For example, in the church. When I, 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 I stood, I sat with my, my, my leaders, my leaders said that, uh, Bishop, uh, out of what we are receiving from the child, this is your portion. Mm -hmm. This is what you may call mm -hmm. a salary or allowance. Mm -hmm. Now, I stick to that. Amen. I stick to what, what the leaders have said that it is mine. Anything else, I don't want to touch. Unless they give me the leadership, give me and say, excuse me, Bishop, we'd like to uh, reward you with that or we'd like to appreciate you for what you are doing. So we give you extra. But I want to be very strict, just like any other, any other place of work, by the way. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in any place of work, there, 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 there's money provided for everything else. So there's a portion for you, there's a portion for different people, because uh, even other workers are there who could you know, be bigger mm. money. So I stick to what is given to me, the rest belong to the church. And that is why I've always said that that's part, part, part of being accountable. You must be accountable, meaning that you must be able to stick to what you have been given, leave the rest for the work that is there. Yeah. And that has helped me so much. And, and, and I've always been faithful to make sure that the money that's meant for the church is for the church. Mm. The next money for me is for me. In fact, I usually make a very interesting statement. I say, any money that I see, which is not mine, I count them as papers. Mm. And I tell people, take these papers to the bank mm. because they belong to the bank. It is the money, that, the one I call money is the one that is meant for me. So I say, this one is mine. Yes, it's money. This one is meant for the church. Take it to the, to the bank. It is not mine. So that is what I've, I've learned from the beginning. And let me tell you, I thank God for the grace of God. I led the different church for 22 years. Listen to me. 22 years. As, as, the, as the bishop? As the bishop, presiding bishop of the church. Mm -hmm. In fact, I started when there were only five congregations. Mm -hmm. By the time I handed over, there were 500 congregations. Amen. But let me tell you, Nobody in the church can be able to follow me today and say you stole some money. 
strict man. I was very strict. Amen. In fact, I, I have not had what you call scandal, mm. where people say that oh, this man is misusing money. I was very strict. That was mine is mine. That was not for for, for that was for the church for the church. And that is what, that is something very rare nowadays. And, and let me tell you to today. Uh, for example, even in, in in when I get money, uh, I make sure that the 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 part part that is uh, the, that tithing that goes to the church, and I don't touch that. I looked at it and I said that belongs to God. Even even if somebody gives me very little money, I pay tithe because that one does not belong to me; it belongs to God. One day, for your information, somebody can give me send me ten shillings. Ten shillings were embarrassed. So when I looked at it, I I look I, I actually called him. I said, excuse me, so and so, I've received some money here. Uh, I don't understand what it is, uh, what it is all for. Uh, he said, Bishop, I just wanted to bless you. And I say, how much did you send? He said, what you see? He did, he did not want to mention. Whatever you have seen is what I have sent. I say, I am asking the question, how much did you send? He said, what you have seen is what I have sent. Uh, so when he sent me 10 shillings, I thought he wanted to check my number, whether this belongs to me. <laughs> because for sure, when, when they didn't it cost him more to yeah, send the ten bob. The, the ten bob. Because I thought he wanted to say, I don't know the, the number of the bishop. Let me just send ten shillings so that his name will appear, and I so so that I can send more. So I thought that's what he did. So I called him and said, "Brother, I received uh, some money here. I don't know what is it for." He said, "Bishop, I just wanted to bless you. Bless me, yeah." Uh, <laughs> How much did you send? What you have seen? He did not want to mention what you have seen. I said, just a minute, mention the figure. He said, no, whatever you have seen, Bishop. Then I said, anyway. So you know what? When it was written 10 shilling, it is one zero dot, zero zero. So I thought there was no dot, so that it yeah. is 1,000. He said, no, no, whatever you have seen. I said, did you send 10 shilling? He said, yes. I said, what for? He said, I just wanted to bless you, Bishop. 10 shilling. Mm. And you know what? I wanted to be faithful to God. You know, the tithe of 10 shillings is one shilling. Mm -hmm. I also said one shilling to the church. <laughs> Why? It's because it is not the amount that matters mm -hmm. when it comes to God. It's the faithfulness. Mm -hmm. It is mm -hmm. the faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Are you faithful in a little before you are faithful in much? much? So I wanted to be very strict. That is what up to today, let me tell you. I am very strict. Any money that I receive, even if it is 10 shillings or whatever, I pay tithe. That is one thing that I want to encourage all the servants of God. Be faithful with a little, mm -hmm. and you'll be faithful in much. With much. That's right. With much. I like that. And maybe, and I think the secret of said lies yeah. in having the system from the word go. From the word you go. can't say when I'll have a lot That's and true. I will do. But knowing, you know, we have a system, this church, maybe all we can raise is a thousand. That's true. Out of this thousand, we yeah. will be giving the pastor. 30% of the that's, thousand, that's, that's 300 true. shillings. That's true. And you take that 300 shillings and that's you be faithful with it. That's so true. you were a bishop for 22 years. For 22 and, years. And you had led, um, the, uh, at the time you were bishop, were you still, you were still the lead pastor at DC? Uh, yeah, I was still DC. assistant, assistant to the, to the bishop. And were you still the pastor at DC? Yeah. DC Lee? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So during, looking back now at, 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 the opportunity that the Lord has given you. Mm. What are some of your proudest moments? You know, the one you're saying, God, I'm so happy you gave me an opportunity to partner with you in achieving this. Yeah. What is that? Now, uh, first of all, um, when I took over uh, from the leadership, or I took over leadership, um, I was not known. In fact, people did not even know my my. my I was very quiet. When I was assisting the, the main bishop, uh, I was very quiet. But when he left and I took over, many people fall, fell that Deliver the Church was not going to continue. Why? Misha. It, Misha. It because comparing me with the person who was there, I was unknown. And he's very charismatic. Very, I'm not, yeah, I was not that. The, the one was, in fact, I say that I could not fit in his shoes. Let me tell you what helped me. And I would like to encourage every pastor who is listening to me to hear this. <coughs> When I took over and I realized I was not worthy, I was not the right person, I did exactly what Solomon did. Mm. I said, Lord, give me wisdom and knowledge mm. that I may know how to lead your people. Let me tell you, if there's one thing that I want to encourage every pastor and every church leader to seek for is God's wisdom. Mm. Let me tell you, 
Uh, I, I was saying that because Solomon took over from his father, who was very experienced. Mm -hmm. His father was a man of war. Mm -hmm. His father was very powerful. Mm -hmm. His father was most respected. Mm -hmm. And he took, when he took over, in fact, God, Solomon asked God, he said, Lord, you have given me the privilege, that is very rare, to take over from my father, who was mm -hmm. such a powerful servant of God. Mm -hmm. Lord, give me wisdom mm -hmm. that I may know how to charge your people. Mm -hmm. And then he said, because who can charge your people that are so, so many? Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, I wish that can be the desire of every man of God mm -hmm. to seek for wisdom. Let me tell you, the Bible says that wisdom is the principal thing. Mm. In the book of Proverbs, chapter, chapter, chapter 4, verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. May God help us to seek for wisdom. And let me tell you, although I was not known, in fact, some people were saying that these were not leaders I mean, for many years. Although I was young and I asked God to give me wisdom, God gave me wisdom. And listen to me now. The church that the churches that I was I, I was I took over from were only five congregation. By the time I handed over, there were five hundred congregation. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something very interesting: there was no split. Amen. Throughout the time that I was there, and let me tell you why: there was no split because, and I wish every member, every minister, can be able to hear this: I never despise anybody. Any time there was a problem in any church. I would go there and listen to everybody. Why? It's because, let me tell you, nobody in this world has monopoly of wisdom. Mm. If you're a leader, don't think that you know it all. Mm. There's something that somebody else knows that you should know. And it listen to me. Listen to everybody. I usually say, listen to everybody except nobody. <laughs> mm. Meaning that before you make any decision concerning any matter, mm. may you learn to listen to people. Mm. Because there are things that people will have. You know, just like I usually compare this with the, 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 the court of law, the, the court. Now, do you know that in, 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 in any, any court of, uh, any, 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 any place where, where there's a court, magistrate or judge will never, never come to conclusion of any, any, any matter that is, brought before, that is brought before him, unless Listen to me now. Unless a witness has, has, has given, yes. given it. Okay. Yeah. If, if, if one of the lawyers said, excuse me, Your Honor, I'm very sorry to say that I know that you're about to conclude this matter. But there's a witness, Your Honor, who is in Kisumu or Mombasa, very far away from us, that uh, I realize that he may not come because of the distance. And therefore, I just, just, just continue, we, we ignore that one. The judge or the magistrate, you say, I will not give the verdict until I hear that witness. Why? He may be the one who knows who, 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 has, who, has who, the, the truth. who, is the, who knows the truth. So that's why I'm saying that every time there was a problem in any church, I love hearing everybody. Mm. And that way, when I expect people, you know somebody said, there's nothing for free in this world. Mm. If you want to be respected, respect people. Mm. If you want to be honored, honor people. Honor people. So that's what helped me. I was able to listen to everybody when there was an any problem in the church, and I thank God because that's what helped me and helped the church to be sustained. Why? It's because I honored everybody. May that happen to us in everywhere we go. Now, I know you've just done 50 years yeah. with your wife. Yeah. And you've done 60 years of ministry. Yeah, 61. How did you balance? What's the secret to balance? Balance. Uh, now, th that's a very powerful question. How do you balance? And let me tell you, I usually say there are five golden rules mm. that I follow. Mm -hmm. In fact, I put it this way. There are five golden rules for Christian living. Mm. Five golden rules. If you want to balance, follow the five golden rules. Amen. Golden rule number one is faith in God. Faith in God. Let me tell you, God wants you to take him as number one in your life. Mm. That's why the children of Israel were told, love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your spirit. Call it rule number two. In fact, I call that one spiritual life. Call it rule number two is what I call, uh, you know, family life. Mm. I'm telling you the truth. May we take care of our family. Mm. Take care of our wives and children. Mm. If we want to be balanced in life. Mm. May that be number two. 
Mm. Another was take care of, because the Bible says in the book of First Timothy chapter one, chapter three, verse five, mm. if one does not know how to take care of his house, how can he take care of the Church of Jesus Christ? Mm. That is golden rule number two. Golden rule number three, which is equally important. Mm. Take care or th- make sure that you have the rank, right, right friends. Mm. Choose friends. Be very selective when you choose friends. Why? It's because, let me tell you, the kind of friends you associate yourself with will either build you or destroy you. Mm. Let me tell you the truth. That is why the Bible says that bad company corrupts good, good morals. Moral. May we be very selective when it comes to friends. May we be friendly to people who can add value to our lives. Mm. That is why the Bible says that he, in Proverbs 13, verse 20, he says that he who was with wise men shall be wise, mm. but the companions of fools shall be destroyed. Mm. May God help us mm. to be selective when it comes to friends. Choose people who can add value to your life. Choose people who can be able to promote you. That's why somebody said, tell me your friends and I will tell you your future. Mm. Tell me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. It, it depends on it. Let me tell you, don't say I don't care who I associate yourself mm-hmm. with. You better be careful because the people you associate yourself with are either promoting you or, or destroying you. It's true. May God help us. That is golden rule number three. Golden rule number four, which is very important, is financial life. Mm. Let me tell you what I mean financial life. If you are faithful with money, you are faithful indeed. Mm. We have people in this world who have been destroyed because of money. In fact, pride comes as a result of you know, also some of those things. You find somebody who was very who was not who did not have as much before financially, uh, was very humble. <laughs> and when he gets money, even the, ty- the, the the style of working is different. Has changed. Has changed. Yes. Let me tell you, I, I'm very careful. Even when God blesses me with millions, I want to remain to, to remain with the same person. You know that that they make, make pride, make, especially nowadays. Many preachers, and I'm very sorry to say this, many preachers, even in their preaching, they are looking for money. It's true. They, 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 they mind about money more than, more than about, about, about the source of men. Uh, and you know what? Uh, money is just, that's why the Bible says the love of it, not money. Mm-hmm. The love, love of, of money, money is, is the root of all evil. So it is not money which is a problem. Mm-hmm. It is love of it. So I am very careful. I want to make sure that I remain the same person even when I become rich. In this world, that is physical, financial life. Number three, number five, sorry. Number five, number five another golden rule that I follow, which has really made me balance, is I take care of my body, physical life. Mm. Let me tell you, there are people today who don't care about what they eat, mm-hmm. they don't care about how they dress. Mm. Let me tell you, I'm very careful to make sure that I, I take care of this body. Yes. Because I couldn't get this atukuni, which you mm-hmm. go for it when this one is low one now. So so Ikisha. That is why let me tell you, very unfortunate. Many of the preachers die young. You've been at this for a while now. Yeah. What is the biggest challenge that you have faced? The the, the in, in the church. In ministry. Yeah. 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 Or even in your journey of life. That's what true. is the thing you were like, whoa, this was a hard knock? That's true. Now, the biggest challenge, and I'm glad you have called it the biggest challenge, is people's expectation from me. Mm. Let me tell you, there's a biggest challenge for a preacher. Mm. You have preached somewhere and people are so blessed. They come and tell you, Bishop, that was a powerful message. Do you know what? It's very difficult to keep that standard. Yes. <laughs> you know, when, when, you go, when you go to the same congregation, they expect you to speak to speak a message that is higher than the one you are preaching. Mm. But you are a human being. Mm. Sometimes you preach, we below, we, 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 we say, oh, today we are not blessed. And therefore, that is the biggest challenge in my life. People's expectation from me. Mm. They are expecting so much, and you, cannot, you are a human being, and you cannot be able to give as much as you have given before. You know, sometimes you go to a place and you preach, and people cry. They shed tears. Why? Because you have touched their souls. When you go next time, you say, I want them to cry the way they cried last time. And then nobody cries. <laughs> nobody cries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they look at you. Let, let me tell you, there was one time, I'm trying to give you a very interesting example. There was one time I was preaching in my church, and we had three services. I preached the first service, and nobody was touched. I said, those of you who are not safe, come forward. Nobody came forward. 
Those who we need prayers to, to, for any reason, nobody came for one. So, and I say that, excuse me, it looks like I have not reached the hearts of these people. We went to the, we wrote, there's a break. We were three services. We went into the office and I say, I cannot continue to preach because I feel it is courage. So I wanted to tell my, my associate to preach. I said, excuse me. I wanted to say, excuse me, can you go and preach? Then I said, surely. How can I surprise somebody who was not prepared for the service and say, go and preach? Let me go and try again. I went the second, second, second time I preached, the same thing happened. The third time I preached, the second thing, the thing happened. I was expecting people to be excited the way they have always been. <laughs> and they were not excited. Let me tell you, after the third service, I was so discouraged. I went to my to my my car. I drove home. Reaching home, I ate and I went to bed. Very discouraged. I slept. Very discouraged. The following day, I went to the church, the church, the church early in the morning because there was somebody, I was at an appointment with somebody at seven o'clock. When I arrived, the caretaker came to see me and said, "Preacher, preacher." I said, "Yes." Hey, hey. I wanted to tell you something. I said, "What is it?" Yesterday. In the service, people were so blessed. Bishop, hey, hey, hey. they were so blessed. In fact, there's a lady who came to tell me that because what you usually do is that uh, when people come to church in the first service, after the service they go through the back, the, the front door, mm. and they want come and go through the come through the main door. The, the, she told me that there's a lady who was so blessed in the first service, he went through the front door and came back through the, the, the back door to attend the service again, the second <laughs> service. And after that, he went back again, she came through the, 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 the main door again. I said, what? To the, the third service. I said, what happened? Is it a bishop? People were blessed. People were blessed. And that is why this lady came and attended the, the three services. They were because they were blessed. Then I say, which scripture did they, did they report? Which plus them? He said, every scripture. In other words, it is not us who convince people. Yeah. It is God. It is the Lord. And therefore, do your part, leave the rest to God. So what am I saying? The most important challenge in my life is people's expectation. Mm. According to me. People, I, I know people are expecting the, me to, 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 to charm in the same way I have charmed, to, to bless them the same way I have blessed. You know, you know, and then, if, 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 if you are in your own way of looking, you feel like they, you need not touch them. Mm. So that is a challenge that I will never, I will never. People expect it from you. They know you as a preacher. They, they were blessed you before. They want, they want you to, if not to maintain the same, we, 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 we climb higher. In other words, consistency yeah. is a challenge. Wow, wow. <laughs> now, what would you tell an upcoming young man? Looking, looking at your life over this period of almost 80 years, yeah. and going back to that 12-year-old boy yeah. who was being kicked out of home for that, believing, that's true. what would you tell that young man? That yeah, man. Yeah, what did you tell your younger self? Yeah. Now, um, there are two words that I would like to mention, which have really helped me. I've just mentioned one, but I would like to explain what I mean. Mm. The first thing that we must always remember mm. is we must be persistent. Mm. Persistent means don't give up. Mm. Don't surrender because you are discouraged. Don't surrender because people are talking about you. Don't surrender because people are, 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 are not happy about the way you are doing things. Mm. May you be persistent. Mm. That is why St. Paul say, I strive mm. towards the mark. The That's right. In other words, he say, I am forgetting the past and I'm going on. Mm. Let me tell you, people are easily discouraged mm. because of maybe what they have heard from people mm. or maybe because what they have experienced mm. and they give up too quickly. May you be persistent. Yeah. May you learn to be somebody who is not easily discouraged. Yes. May you be somebody who is going to stand regardless of what people feel about mm. you. Mm. May you be somebody who will be able to never to give up just because of things which are not happening well, according to you. Mm. Why? Because God remained the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm. May you so learn to do the same. Mm. Even if you feel that you have not done well, continue. Even if people are criticizing you, continue. Even if you think that people are not, are not happy about you, continue. Persistence is the word. The second word that I also use, which I've just mentioned you know, before, is consistency. 
Consistent means keep keep it high. Keep in the same position. May you continue, and by, by the grace of God, to be able to stand firm yeah. and remain in the same position. May, may you be somebody who is always saying, I know the Lord is going to undertake for me, regardless of what happened. Yeah. That's why it's in Paul, when he was writing to Ephesians, in the book yeah. of Ephesians 6, verse 10, I like yeah. that scripture. He said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of oh, his might. He nice. said, finally, brethren, I like that. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In other words, may you remain strong regardless of what. And I, and I think he, he was talking about uh, taking all the whole armor of God. And let me tell you, when you take the whole armor of God, as mentioned in that, that scripture, may you continue uh, to, to do that until the end. And I like what the, 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 uh, the number, uh, Vision chapter 6, verse 18, where St. Paul concluded by saying, and I like that. He said, pray for all saints. Amen. Pray for all saints. Amen. And then in verse 19, he said, and for me. What a powerful statement. In other words, let me tell you the truth. We all need prayers. Mm. He said, Paul, he, uh, he's asking simple Ephesians who are just, you know, like uh, maybe they are his, his, his sons and daughters, his children. He's telling them that, let me tell you, I need prayers. May that help us. May, may, may we always continue to do that. May we continue to say that, pray for me also. Mm. Because all of us need prayers. Nobody can be, can, 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 can be strong alone. We need prayers of all saints. Mm -hmm. So that has helped me to tell the, 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 um, the Christians, may you pray for me. And I usually tell them, tell them, please, brethren, as you want to expect me to pray for you, pray for me too. He said that I may be, I may be bold in where I am, and I may continue to minister. So those are the things that have helped me Amen. to be, to be, to be consistent mm -hmm. and to be persistent, to continue regardless of what happened. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't give up even when I, because failure is there as human yeah. being. Yeah. You know, there are some things that you that you may do and you don't you don't succeed, mm -hmm. just like any other person who may not succeed. Mm -hmm. But never allow anything to discourage you until you don't you do not succeed anymore. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I know that God has opened a whole new chapter for you now. That's We're true. talking about it a little bit before. Yeah. So as we're coming towards the end, yeah. tell us about finishing well. Finishing well. And your passion the to part. make sure that those that you started with, mm -hmm. and even your own journey, that yeah. you will finish strong. Thank you. Now, um, I have discovered, and that's very true, I'm sure you agree with me, that there are so many Christians or even pastors, or servants of God, who have started well, they have lived well, but they didn't finish well. Not only in Kenya, but even all over the world. I know so many great men of God, you know, who are powerful, people like A.A. Alan, who are powerful. Mm. In fact, he said that they were so powerful that uh, he would not even speak to the, to the demons to leave people. Uh, he would just simply say, A.A. Alan is around, and the demons leave. Just because of their presence. Wow. Just because of their presence. And yet, at the end, he, 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 he got he lost. Up. He messed up his life. And there are so many... I, I read that book, which is called uh, God's General. God's General. Talking about great people whom God used in a special way, but they didn't go very far. Mm. In fact, somebody put it in a very interesting way. I think somebody from the Western world. I think America or somewhere. He said that in Africa, preachers shoot up like rockets and they come down like dry sticks. Mm. Very unfortunate statement. Shoot up like rockets, and they come down like dry sticks. Dry sticks meaning that even when you, when, 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 when you think about them, you ask the question, I see a zeal alive. Mm. And the person is alive, but he has mm. gone. Let me tell you, I have discovered that it is very easy to start well, live well, but you don't finish well. Mm. And therefore, I've started a foundation. And I call it a Finishing Well Foundation. Mm. I'm encouraging especially preachers to start well, live well, but above all, finish, finish well. well. Finish well and finish strong. Now, and I, as I said from the beginning, if only you take care of those five F's that I mentioned, you will finish well. Amen. I'm telling you that you do finish well. Because the devil will always make sure that the, he, he attacks you in the first part of that F. Mm. 
Mm. That is your spiritual life. Yeah. He will make sure that you don't read your Bible anymore. He makes sure that you don't pray anymore. He makes sure that actually uh, you don't love the Lord anymore. And that is affecting the, the first F, your faith in God. Number two, the devil is actually attacking the families. I mean, I have, uh, I'm dealing with so many people who, have, who are powerful servants of God and their problems with their wives. Mm. I know one who has even divorced mm. his wife, a servant, powerful servant of God. Mm. Let me tell you, I know the enemy is attacking us, especially for some level, the mm. relations between husband and wife. Mm. And when he comes in and he makes sure that the husband and wife are not together, he separates them. And the aim is to destroy the church or to destroy the faith. And even, for example, the children. Let me tell you, I thank God because all my children are safe and spirit filled. My firstborn son is a pastor. He's a pastor. In fact, in the church where I've been. Did you see? Yeah, easily. That he, is such a yeah. blessing. Yeah, he's a pastor. He's actually a reverend. He's, he's ordained. So he's actually my pastor. When I go there and sit down, <laughs> I sit down, he preaches to me. Then you're able to know if you did a good job. <laughs> that's right. That's right. In fact, somebody said, and I like I like quoting that. Somebody said that in any position you are holding, mm. you are not you are not successful unless your success has succeeded. Mm. You are not successful unless your success unless your success has succeeded. In fact, that is the reason why I handed over the child to somebody else who is now there. And now the person is successful. I can now declare myself successful. Mm. Why? The person I handed over the baton is successful. Mm. And therefore I can claim that I'm successful. So that's why I'm saying that I thank God because of that. The second, the third thing that the devil attacks, or rather used to finish us, is the wrong friends that you associate yourself. As I was saying, the F and I'm number three. Let me tell you, be careful with the kind of people you associate yourself. Mm. And I want to say, not only am I talking about the ordinary friends, even the kind of friends that you associate with are pastors. Some of them are rotten. Some of them yeah. are lost. Be very mm. careful. Association with people who are not living right. Mm. You will also not live right. Mm. The other thing that has also helped me is the area of faithfulness with money. Mm. Telling you, money, the Bible says, the love of money is the root of all evil. May God help us never to be so, to love money more than love God. Mm. And of course, the, third, the, the fifth one is fitness. People, uh, they leave the body and they, therefore they, 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 are not, they are careful with the way they use their body. So may God help us. Okay. And I tell you that is, those, are, those golden rules have helped, helped me and be consistent, about to be consistent for all these years. So I want to challenge everybody, follow the five Fs oh. and you are going to be strong the rest of your life. And how can somebody be part of this uh, Finish Well Foundation? Because like you've rightly said, it is very, very important, even in putting together yeah. the people that we talked about in this show. Mm. And some of them were invited and for various reasons couldn't make it. Mm. But there were also some who we would have wanted to, but honestly, we couldn't because they have not stayed the course. That's true. You know, they've not stayed faithful to where they began. Yeah. So how can someone you know, partner with you or get involved yeah. with FWF? Yeah. Now, thank you so much. Now, apparently I have somebody who is... Uh, uh, my, 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 what you call my, my personal assistant, mm -hmm. who is dealing with that. In other mm -hmm. words, he's, he's, a he's a secretary of the, of the, of the, mm -hmm. of the foundation. Mm -hmm. His name is, uh, 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 his brother, James Onzongo. Mm -hmm. James Onzongo. Mm -hmm. His number is 0724-382-424. James write, Onsongo. That's right, James Onsongo. If you write to James Onsongo, he will give you all the information about this foundation. Yeah. That's right. And so if you're watching us and you want to know that, just like and subscribe or just get in touch with us and we will that's let true. you know how to get... That's true. In, well, how to finish as well, well as you began. That's right. Finish okay. well and finish strong. Finish. What's your favorite verse, Pastor? What's the verse that you can say has been your guiding verse during the course of your life? I see. Now... Um, the one which says in Mark, rather in, in Psalms, chapter 37, verse 37, which I had quoted, mm -hmm. Mark a perfect man, mm -hmm. and behold, they are bright. Mm -hmm. For the end of that man is peace. peace. I want to end peacefully. 
want to end it, please. And for me to end peacefully, I must be an upright man and I must be a perfect man. Amen. In all areas of my life. Amen. And that is the verse that I keep on saying. I won't be that example of like Job, mm. where God would be proud, to, proud of him and say, have you seen my servant Job? Mm. I, want to, I want to be perfect. Amen. I want to be upright. Amen. I want to, be, to end well and Amen. end peacefully. Amen in my life. And you are on the right track. For sure, you're on the right track. Amen, you're watching us. And that is a secret, you know. It's not, it's not rocket science. Just be faithful. Be faithful in your work with God. Love your family. Choose godly companions. Be faithful with money and take care of your body. And you will finish well. So give us your parting shot, Pastor. Yes, I want to uh, encourage everybody who is listening to me that um, even if you feel that you have failed, don't give up. May God help you to be somebody who will, who will continue to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And therefore, I want to challenge everybody, as the Bible says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And God is going to help you. Amen. 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 Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And God is going to help you. Amen. Thank you so much, Bishop. Thank I'm you. so, so honored to sit and to learn. Thank and my prayer is that also I will finish well. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Amen.